In this video, I'm going to walk you guys through how to validate the catch-all emails on your lead list. So I'm going to roughly get you 20 to 40% of your lead list back and get you contacts that never get cold emails. So let's get into this Notion document and I can walk you through the entire process. All right, so let me take you through the process we have at Leadbird when it comes to validating our lead list. So whether you pull your lead list from Apollo, ZoomInfo, or any other data source, you're always gonna to wanna to validate it but prior to launching the actual email campaign. So sit back and kind of think about it, right? Like your lead list is just sitting in a database for months at a time. And you know, whenever someone switches a job or loses their job, their company's probably gonna get rid of their email, right? And these databases aren't going to reflect that immediately. And so if you start to email your lead list and you have you know a whole bunch of contacts that are you know kind of old, then what happens is you start to get bounces and the bounces, they ruin your email deliverability. So that's why you always want to validate it using tools like Never Bounce, Zero Bounce. There's tons of tools out there and they're all built using the same technology. And so that's what I'm going to kind of break down here, right? So most email validation tools, they're going to split your emails into three scenarios. They're going to break it down into valids, accept alls, which are also known as catch alls, and invalids. And Bowtie Systems is a great follow on Twitter, kind of breaks it down of how these systems work. But basically, the email validation tool is going to run an SMTP check. So it's going to basically send a ping to the email address that you provide. And if it comes back positive, and it's basically saying, hey, you know, this email is valid, right? But sometimes these SMTP checks will come back and say, hey, you know, this email belongs to a catch-all domain, right? Or, hey, this email is invalid, right? So that's how these tools work. The issue here, though, is that some of these tools, specifically the cheaper ones that I've seen on the market, you know, the SMTP check that they're doing the ping from, right? That IP is typically blacklisted. And so then it gives you incorrect errors when you actually do the validation of your lead list. And so you want to be kind of careful and, you know, stray away from some of these, like, LTBs that you may see on AppSumo, that are doing email validation, you want to stay with more of the premium kind of tools like never bounce and zero bounce. So now let's kind of go into what exactly is a catch all email, right? And it's a pretty simple process. You see this a lot in government organizations like hospitals, for example. You know, they want to make sure that every email is received and that nothing goes missing, right? So, you know, it's basically just a mail server setting. And you're basically configuring it to accept all emails attached to that domain, even if there isn't a mailbox that is existing or not, right? And so a great example is like in this picture right here, let's say that, you know, Alice support and sales are emails that are not active, right? They're not active on the domain. But for some reason, you know, you think, hey, these emails are active and you email them, right? Basically, it's still going to be received in like a sync in inbox. And this inbox basically just collects everything, right? And so most like smart marketers, they're not going to email the catch all emails typically or the invalids because they don't want bounces because, you know, a catch all email can still reject your email and have it sent back to you. And what we've seen from our testing is that anywhere from 40 to 60% of your catch-alls will bounce. So you have to be kind of careful about it. But here's the thing, right? The catch-alls are kind of like gold in a way, because what happens is that, you know, 40 to 60% of the catch alls are invalid, but that other 40% that is actually valid, you know, these people aren't getting good cold emails. They hardly get any cold emails. And if the cold emails they do receive are kind of like the ones that are sent by like people that are doing legitimate spam, right? So imagine if you come in with a good value prop, you know, your targeting is on point, you come in with some personalization, you're more likely to get a response. And so that's why it's so important to actually validate your catch all emails. And so I'm gonna take you through a couple of different processes in place to kind of validate the catch all emails. So the only way you can validate your catch all emails with 100% accuracy is using burner email accounts to do a test. And so this is pretty common inside of like the lead generation spaces. You know, a lot of companies, you know, have these practices built internally. It's very tedious to do. Basically the entire game plan is to have like burner email accounts, more specifically like Gmail accounts. So like think of like Nick Abraham at gmail.com. And your goal is to send a blank email to the catch all and just manually see if it bounces or not. And the issue there is like, you know, think about it, you know, your burner Gmail accounts, they're going to probably die out, you know, within a week. And then you have to kind of go into the actual mailbox and keep track of what bounced, what didn't bounce, what went through. And some of the bounces sometimes take anywhere from 48 hours to 72 hours to actually report. So it's just a tedious process. But thankfully, we figured out how to automate that entire process inside of Scrubby. So Scrubby is our catch-all email validation tool that we've built. We basically 
do the exact process that I mentioned, as well as some other verification checks on the back end to come back to you and say, hey, these emails are valid, these emails are invalid. So that's the only solution on the market to actually validate your catch all emails. And like I said, it's like literal gold when you validate your catch all emails and you email those guys because they don't get emails. And so they're more receptive to it. The other methods that can kind of give you a very good, accurate guess, but still isn't 100% accurate, is using these two methods. One is called people chips, and the other one is something I actually saw from QuickMail's newsletter, which I think you guys should subscribe to. Very insightful, up to date newsletter that, you know, they'll come out and give you a lot of good tips and tricks. And so one is called people chips, which I'll actually show you how to do inside of Google Sheet right now. So let me hop into a Google Sheet real quick and I'll show you how to get this process going. All right, so I'm in my Google Sheet right now, and I'm basically gonna walk you guys through the people chips method that you can invoke. And so what people chips is doing, it's taking all the emails that you provided and seeing if there is a Google account that is there as well. And so there's a couple issues with this, right? So first of all, this only works with Google accounts, right? So, you know, other providers like Zoho or Outlook, they're not gonna be able to be identified using people chips. So that's one issue. The other thing too, is that people chips isn't always accurate in the sense of, it being a valid email. So what we've seen from our data is that I would say about 80% of the campaigns that we've ran using the people chips method has worked out perfectly fine, but the other 20% have resulted in bounce rates above 2%. So this is not a 100% accurate method, but if you have a small list and you know you don't wanna put it through Scrubby for some odd reason, this is the method to use. So let me kind of walk you through how this process goes. So you know once you take your emails from you know your email validation tool like Neverbounce, you wanna filter it to only the catch-all emails. You don't wanna run the people chips on valid or invalid emails, right? So I'm gonna put it strictly to the catch-all emails. And then what I'm gonna say is make two columns to the right of it. I'm gonna call this one people chips. And then I'm actually gonna create a, another column right here, to the left of it, that is just another row for the emails, right? So I'm gonna just call it email two. And I wanna copy all the emails that are catch all emails and add it over into email two. And just for this example, I'm gonna throw in another email that is not active. So let's go ahead and do that one. And I'm gonna add that over here as well. And we'll go ahead and just say the status is catch all. And then basically what you wanna do is hover over column B and convert this to people chips. And you'll see that one of the emails gets a nice little cloud over it, the other one doesn't. And so what this is basically saying is this is a Google account. There's a Google account around it, right? And so that works out pretty well because then what I could say is create this simple formula that says, if it does not have A2 equal B2 for it to be true. So it's just saying if A2 does not equal B2, it is true, right? And we wanna get rid of all the falses because these do equal, but this doesn't have a people chips around it. So now I could say, let's only have trues there and bam, just like that, I now have validated my catch-all emails with a pretty accurate guess using people chips. So that's how people chips works. Very simple process. I would highly recommend baking this into your process when it comes to validating your cold emails. So now let's hop back into the Notion document so I can show you how you can validate your emails using another mechanism. So this method's a little bit more on the gray hat area. I actually picked this up from a quick mail newsletter that they dropped a couple weeks ago. And basically what this is doing is testing different systems to see if the user is available there. So let me kind of give you this example, right? If an email is hosted on Google and you open up Gmail and you enter the email that you want to verify, Google will tell you real time if the email is valid or not by simply saying, you know, you couldn't find your Google account, right? And then, you know, if Google asks for the password instead, so like it goes to the next page, then you know the email is correct. And so you could take this method and apply it to hundreds of different tools, right? And you can actually automate this process as well. And then this will actually tell you, once again, if the email is active or not. And so, you know, you only want to do this once again to the invalids and the valids. You know, I'd probably even stay away from the valids because there is some false negatives, even using these methods. And so you just want to be a little careful, you know, the surefire way to almost get 100% accuracy with validating your catch -alls, it's going to be Scrubby. So let me kind of pop back into another screen and show you how Scrubby looks and how you can actually utilize Scrubby to validate your catch -all emails. All right, so this is Scrubby. This is a tool we built. It has the exact same interface as QuickLines. And so what we're doing here is you're just uploading your catch -alls and your invalids. And basically what we're doing is we built an automated system on the back end to use a ton of Gmail burner accounts to send blank emails to your prospecting list that you provide to see what emails bounce 
or don't bounce. And so I only recommend that you put your invalids and your valids through here because you know most email validation tools like NeverBounce are gonna be very accurate when it comes to the SMTP check. And so what happens on our backend, like I said, is we're processing the list. The list will take anywhere from 48 hours to 72 hours to process because sometimes bounces take that long to show up. And so, yeah, that's basically it with Scrubby and how you wanna go through validating your catch-alls to get more out of your lead list. If you take this process, you're gonna be able to get anywhere from 20 to 40% of your data back, which means that you're gonna save money. You're gonna be emailing people that don't get as many cold emails or as many good cold emails. And then you're actually gonna start sending more appointments and hopefully make more money. So this is one of the methods that we use at Leadbird and something that I highly recommend that you start to bake into your lead list email validation process.